It happening right now, that malt shop at the center of a hot debate in Albuquerque is getting ready to talk about how it wants to fix a problem with one of its former workers. Now, if you remember, the guy who owns the Route 66 malt shop here, Eric Zeman, says he has a verbal agreement with his workers that they would work at the wage they were hired at, not Albuquerque's new minimum wage, which went up at the beginning of the year. Technically, that is against the rules, and at first the city said it did not have the resources to do anything about it. Then this man who used to work at the malt shop, Kevin O'Leary, spoke out against it. So then a city attorney jumped in and said he would represent Mr. O'Leary and help other people who are not getting paid the new minimum wage. We'll be at the malt shop this morning, and we'll let you know exactly what happens there. One judge here in New Mexico is off the bench right now. In fact, he will never be on it again. Now, the state Supreme Court says he took advantage of his power and may have even been using the courthouse as a sexual playground. The high court forced Eugenio Mathis off the bench yesterday, and the list of reasons why go on and on. Justice has said that Mathis sent mounds of instant and appropriate messages to his wife, who is a court clerk supervisor at the same courthouse and in one of them he allegedly even jokes about quote getting busy in a jury room plus court documents show that Mathis would do this even while trials were going on and when he was on the bench despite this here is what Mathis told us about his rulings back in 2006 people don't understand that you make rulings based upon uh, well-established rules of law well-established rules of evidence now, we have not heard if Mathis' wife is keeping her job at the courthouse. Albuquerque Public Schools is trying to send a very strong message to the courts after a kid accused of bullying was allowed to wrestle in the state championships last weekend, even though he was suspended. APS has now filed a motion asking a judge to rethink his decision to allow Nick Chavez to wrestle. Chavez here was suspended from Rio Grande High School last week for bullying after a sheriff's deputy says Chavez took another kid's lunch money and slapped him. But his family hired a lawyer, got some politicians involved, three of them, including a school board member, and then got a judge to have an emergency hearing and eventually was allowed to wrestle. APS wants that decision reversed. A fugitive considered armed and dangerous is still on the run this morning after deputies call off the manhunt for him. A deputy pulled over a car on a traffic stop at Carnuel on Old Highway 66 yesterday afternoon. When the car halted, the driver fled on foot. This is him, identified as 32-year-old Ronnie Jaramillo. Jaramillo has multiple warrants for his arrest, mostly from traffic violations and failing to appear in court. The third person here accused of murdering two young mothers in Albuquerque last year is supposed to be in court in just a few hours. Sabrina Garley is set to plead guilty or not guilty. Investigators say she is one of three people who killed May Valerio and Naomi Trujillo here at the Warren Coronado Apartments on Lomas last April. Shalaka Booker and Alfonso Thompson are also charged in the murders. They're both in jail right now. Well, the man charged with raping and killing a one-month-old baby in Albuquerque is now set to go to trial later this year, even though his lawyers tried to get him off the hook yesterday. They argued that Juan Galindo's right to a speedy trial had been violated, but a judge disagreed. Prosecutors say he was high on meth back in 2011 when he raped and beat a little girl and killed her. Galindo claims the baby was choking and constipated and he hit her back to help her. This morning, investigators are trying to figure out the identity of a body found in the Rio Grande in Socorro County. The body was discovered Wednesday in the river near Bernardo. The body has been sent to the Office of the Medical Investigator in Albuquerque for identification and cause of death. Investigators are treating the case as a suspicious death right now. Albuquerque police will soon release the name of the 47-year-old man who was hit and killed on a busy Northwest Albuquerque roadway Wednesday night. Police say a woman was driving with her two young children, ages six and seven, when a man ran out in front of the van on course that happened just before 8.30. He was not in a crosswalk and the driver had just passed through a green light at St. Joseph when this happened, according to authorities. Police say that right now it doesn't look like the driver did anything wrong. Well, keeping your kids safe from sexual predators, that's what Albuquerque Police and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security are now teaming up to do. They have what they call a speed unit, and the two agencies use it together to track down and arrest predators, particularly ones who come here from all over the country, hoping to prey on kids and even have sex with them. And a lot of times, these sexual offenders are meeting kids online, especially with social media. This vehicle was seized from an individual who lives in Tennessee and decided that while he was in Albuquerque, he was going to have sex with a child that he met on the Internet. 
Investigators say these sexual predators aren't just going online to Facebook and chat rooms anymore. Take a look, they're even going after kids on Xbox and PlayStation. Plus, they're texting kids once they get their phone numbers. Well, the month of March is bringing your chance to make the Police Oversight Commission more accountable and transparent. The commission here in Albuquerque is a group of people the city council picks to basically police the police. Now, councilors Brad Winner and Ray Garduno here have created a police oversight task force to evaluate the police oversight commission and find ways to make it better. Hope that all makes sense. The task force will have public meetings all around town in March to hear your thoughts on all this. Now, as soon as we hear when and where those meetings are going to be, we will let you know. Again, basically the gist of it, there's a task force to police the group that polices, polices. the police. Yeah. Okay. All right, 507. Hope